Hello there, Touch Designer Programmers, Matthew here. So, what we were just doing is we were just playing with this idea of how we make this particular kind of effect happen and how we do that with texture instancing. And this is pretty swanky. This is um, pretty all right. I'm feeling good about this. But what happens if we don't have this particular arrangement, right? Like, what are we going to do if uh, we are in a position where we don't have a GPU to make this particular method work um, the same way. Well, let's go ahead and let's use all this work that we've done already. So we're going to go and take this, copy and paste it, and we're going to look at how we uh, kind of approach this from a different angle. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up, and we'll scoot it down over here into the corner. So we've still got it waiting here for us. And now the thing that we can, uh, that we need to think about is we need to think just a little bit differently about how we make all of these sections work the right way, right? Like we're pretty close to this, um, but this is going to be a bit of a, of a boondoggle for us if we can't actually um, use this particular method of instancing, right? So this uh, instance textures and texture index, this particular method only works on newer NVIDIA cards. So if we don't have a newer NVIDIA card, what, what do we do, right? How do we make it work? Well, here's one way that we might do it. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of these. Yoink. We'll pretend like they don't even exist. We're gonna get rid of our replicator and all that shenanigans. And we're even gonna get rid of that business. Oof. Actually, before we get rid of it, let's go ahead and we're gonna rescue a few things from inside here. So we're gonna grab all those elements and oops, we're gonna bring them out here. So we'll copy, paste. We can see that everything is grumpy right now. Oh, geez, what do we do? Well, we also need to do one other, well, not. Yep, the truth is we need to do one other thing. We're gonna come in here and we're actually gonna bypass this insert because it's just gonna give us a headache. We'll see why in a second. It's just gonna be easier if we don't have to worry about a header. So now we've got the same array of information, right? We've got a row or an index value. We've got an X and a Y coordinate. And so how can we use that? What can we do with all of that? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this null and we're gonna add a select instead. And we're going to take advantage of the fact that the select that we can go by index. And let's look at just index 0, 0. Right? So if we look at this for a second, we can see that we, we've got this posi particular position. OK. I like that. That's good. That's, that's helping me. Um, with my crop, right? let's go ahead and get rid of that select up here because we don't need that guy. If we think about how we're cropping here, we could think about running this crop instead of with this um, up one business. Let's go ahead and, well, let's do this. Let's give this the name null one, or let's leave it as select and let's add a null. We might as well do it this way. And then we can get rid of this dot dot slash business. And we can look just here at null instead. Now we'll see that we still have a problem, and that's because x and y aren't values that we can associate here, right? So we need to instead uh, think about the fact that this is 1 and 2, right? So this is column 1, column 1, column 2, column 2. We don't need this mead parent digits business anymore. We can just rely on 0 because we're going to think about how we can change this a little bit, right? Okay, we're almost there. Wonderful. So now we've gone ahead and just cropped this down to one little 80 pixel region. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Matt. That seems like an awful lot of work, right? But let's remember that we can go one to one, right? Two and two. Okay, so so the, the question you should be asking is, okay, well, how do we take advantage of that? What, what good is that to me? Let's go ahead and turn our text back on here for a second also. 
we're going to use null 1. And instead of this expression, we can rely on the fact that we're just going to use 0. Well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this and we're going to store all of this information in a texture 3D. And we can do that with the texture 3D operator, right? We can see here that lo and behold, if we look at that, right? And let's change our index here, 0, 0, right? So if you're, if you're starting to think about the fact, what that means, it means that we can actually think about what we might do with this to hold on to all of our slices. We could put all of our slices in this one operator, and we can actually use this texture 3D uh, to our advantage. Okay, that's, that's sounding intriguing. So what do we do? So first things first, let's go ahead and set our cache size to so 143. 143, excuse me. All right, and that's still not right, it should be 145. Wonderful. And now, now is the hard part. Now I gotta start thinking, now I gotta do some, a little bit of like thinking and grumbling here. Uh, because what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this texture 3D, we're gonna turn its active parameter off. We're gonna swap this from being a 3D texture to being a 2D texture array. Now, one of the things that we'll notice is that we can actually replace single values in here, or single slices in, in our big array. Which means that if we did this the right way, right? Like if we wanted to, like the headache would be to say, all right, so this is zero and this is zero. And over here, the index I want to replace is zero. Okay, great. And so I'm gonna go ahead and change that single one. There's one. <sighs> okay, so then two is already good, so then I can go to three and three. Oops, I want to use two and two. So I can come over here and I could see that I want to replace two. All right, I can replace two. Oh, bother. Right, what's going on? I, I Clearly, I'm going to have to like really think carefully about this. Let's actually go back. Zero, zero. Oh, there it is, right? One, two, three. Okay, so, so then what? So then we come over here. We do this again, two, two. We replace that. Okay, we can see what's really going on. Okay, let's try one more. Let's do three, three. We should see this one change over here maybe. Oh, there it is. Oh, because we didn't change this one, right? Right, like you can see how that would be a really laborious task. It'd be really a bummer. Well, let's not do that by hand. That seems pretty lame. Let's grab a text app. And let's write a script to do that for us. Because certainly we can manage to actually have our script at do that for us instead. There's no reason for us to do that. At all. Okay. So here, let's make this a little let's make this viewer active. We're gonna define a few things. Uh, we need to know something called merge, and merge is gonna be the way that we actually figure out the number of rows. And you know, if we wanted to do that, we could actually just use Let's do this. Let's call it rows. And we'll use null one. Oh, and we can't use null one, right? We need to use eval one. It's got 144. Eval one. Great. And we're going to take advantage of that, just like that. Great. Let's go ahead and while we're at it, The next thing we need to know is actually what's going on over here in this null, right? So we're gonna call that select because that's actually which one of the slices that we're selected on. And this is null one, excellent. And then we've got our texture, which I'll call text. And that's the operator, ay ay ay, operator, text three, D1, and this should, these should be operators also, right? Up, up, okay, great. So we've got eval one, we've got our null one, and we've got our text, texture 3D. Okay, 
So far, so good. So now for the meat of this. Now we're going to write a little simple for loop. So for m in the range, or actually for row, why don't we do it for row? For row in the range of rows dot num rows, we're going to look at select, and we want select's parameter called row, row index start to be equal to row, and we want select its parameter called row index end to also be equal to row, right, that's row right over here, great, and then I want my texture, right, the parameter called replace index to be equal to row also. And last but not least, I want to look at the parameter. So my texture 3D parameter reset single pulse dot pulse. Right? So I'm actually going to pulse this thing over here. Now, with any luck, we're going to go ahead and run this and we Oh, good, we've got an error. What error do we have? All oh, right. No parameter row index start. Hmm. So select two. Aha. Of course not. Because this shouldn't be null one. This should be select two. Silly us. Great. Now let's run that. Okay, good. We've got another error here. What did we miss? There's no attribute par. Row 9, text par replace index. Replace index. Text. Aha! Here we've got 2D instead of 3D. That was silly of me. Let's try one more again. <gasps> there we go. All right. So we can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13. Right? We can see that all of our textures are now broken up here just the way we want we wanted. Oh, we've got one extra one here. Should be, ah, of course, because that should be 144 and not 145. Let's run this one more time. All right, let's reset it. There we go. And run this. Ah, 144 of these. We start at one, we go to 144. They're all there. Life is feeling pretty good. What on earth are we going to do? All right, well, let's back out here. Let's come up here to our geo, and we should be able to see now that we want to look at textures, right? And we want text3d1, that's who we're looking at. And now we're going to use the w coordinate instead, right? So our w coordinate now is what's acting as our slice position. Because actually, each one of the, our images here in this particular texture 3D, its W coordinate corresponds to where it lives in this particular array. And that's great. This is another way to solve that same problem. Uh, and if you're doing any instancing where you don't have a newer GPU, and this is the method that you need to actually use, you need to use like a, a 2D array of textures, this is a great way to be able to start to think about how to solve that problem. And in fact, using this kind of scripting method over here, right? The scripting method where we actually fill up this texture array is exactly the thing that we'd want to do. And we could even, you know, with a little bit more forethought, we could uh, think about how we might set this up so that whenever we changed our movie input, right? So we switched to one of these other images, that that would go ahead and automatically fire this script off. Now, um, that script does take some time to run, right? So it, it's, you know, not free. It's not nearly as fast as some of our other approaches. Um, so you, we need to think about how do we do that, right? Like, how do we fire off all of that action in a way that doesn't interrupt our scene? And there are a number of ways that we might think about what that means or how to think about doing that. We could also take advantage of the fact that we could uh, lock our operator here, right? So we could actually if we wanted. One, another way to think about this would be to grab an ex another texture 3D. Let's unlock this one. Or excuse me, let's leave this one locked and unlock this one because 3D1 is the, the one that's active for us right now. Let's grab another image, right? And we might do like, um, 
sure. Well, let's grab something more interesting. There we go. Great. Let's run this script again. All right, now we've got this bad boy all set up, right? And if we were to add a null, you might imagine where I'm going with this, right? And we need a switch. So we can plug these two into our switch, our switch into our null. Over here, instead of text 3D1, let's point to null 2, I think is what it's called. And we can bring this back. Yoink. There we go. Now we have the option of switching these, right? So now we've actually gone ahead and sliced these all up and stored them, and we can kind of quickly jump back and forth between what these are. Now the one caveat there, right, is that uh, these are a little bit memory intensive. We can see that um, this texture 3D, oh, well, that's not terrible, 4.69 megs, that's pretty reasonable. That's like not huge at all. That's certainly not as big as it could be. So we might think about ways that we could keep doing that, right? So we could even like, let's, let's go crazy. Well, let's not go too crazy. Um, let's lock this one, and then we'll copy it, right? So it's, we've got this one that's locked. Ooh, i got to get rid of that. There we go. Better. Um, we come over here, we could throw in another texture, maybe the jelly beans. The jelly beans are awfully fun. We could run our script again. Great, right? And now we've got three different textures that we can work with in terms of how this is actually being pushed around. And, you know, if we did this blend between inputs, ooh, that doesn't work quite the way that we want it to. Well, yeah, something funky is there in zero. Oh, but we're, three is okay. Hmm. Oh, I bet blending between these arrays is probably complicated in a way that mm, I haven't totally thought through. That's right, we can use our switch for sure to bounce between all of these. So that's another way for us to think about how we actually do some 3D texturing and 3D instancing. So with that in mind, um, here in a little bit, we'll look at some other interesting and exciting things that we can do with textures because if we can use this idea, right? So like this idea that we might take a single image and break it all apart into something like this. What happens if we then think about taking a video, right? And my example for you would be something like this. Like let's imagine that I have this video and I'm gonna go ahead and play it. And what I've done here, blah, psychedelic city, is I've actually gone ahead and made a video where every single frame in the video is a different image. So that means that um, by kind of thinking carefully about that, I can then take that image and I could extract from it each one of the frames. So I can grab each frame out from that. And then I can take that and I can start to build my 3D instances. Right, so now I'm starting to end up with something where I'm using a single video file. And once I've got this single video file, now I'm actually able to use that to import all of my textures rather than uh, thinking about pulling in a, a folder full of images. Instead, I'm just dealing with one video file. And that one video file actually holds all of my textures. Whew. Okay, excellent. So where we're going here in the future is we're going to do even more instancing. We're going to use a really clever technique uh, to get out a whole bunch of textures. That's really great and fun. And then we're going to look at what we might do with that. All right, everybody. Happy programming.